Rick George, Athletic Director of the Year. Wow, that is awesome, isn't it? He is, he is doing a heck of a job with all the sports, uh, all the programs here. Uh, men's basketball team opened up in the, with the tournament tonight. Uh, the women plays Drake on Friday. First time in 11 years both programs advanced to the tournament. Awesome, the ski team won the championships, which is awesome. I might start skiing now to get off the snowmobile. The tennis team is 12 and three. Awesome. Uh, the golf, lacrosse, and track uh, and field teams are off to strong starts as well. Spring game, April 27th. Uh, we're still waiting on television to see. Uh, we know ESPN is uh, dealing with the draft, and uh, we're waiting on probably Fox and uh, still Pac-12 to, to see what they're going to do so we can announce this thing and, and get these tickets sold out. We're going to sell out the spring game. Uh, students of the week. Uh, Nana Watson, freshman safety. Uh, Nikhil Webb Walker, sophomore, and linebacker. Um, journalism major, first guy. Second guy, economics major, which is great. Okay, here we go. Now, I got these depth charts out just in case you guys ask me about that. Good to be back. Had uh, two really, 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 really good practices. And I'm so uh, excited about this season. I'm excited about this staff. You guys just talked to the OCDC, right? Yes, sir. They're really good, aren't they? Personable. Um, communication is tremendous, how they're relating and the re their relatability to the team. The staff, to me, is uh, phenomenal from, from top to bottom. And uh, I think we still got uh, maybe one more piece that we're going to add significantly. But I'm so excited about what I'm seeing out there. Let's go. Hey, Coach, how are you? Go ahead. Not a two-parter, but I know you look one at a time. Yeah. Uh, so first one is, has it started to set in? I like your haircut. Let's do this for you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah. I like your shoes. Thank you. Sir. Um, has it started to set in for you that this could be your last year coaching your kids? Yeah, it's been. It, it, it set in uh, quite some time ago. I mean. I'm a real dad, which means that we have a tremendous relationship, which means that we communicate often, um, daily, and uh, we can't wait to take our son's vacation this, this weekend um, when spring break commits. So I can't wait to, so we can talk about other things in life that, that our plans and our preparations. But it's, it's phenomenal to think it's been a tremendous journey. And uh, I think Shador played four games would doubt me when I went when I when I my leg injury. That's it in his entire life. Which is crazy. So I'm thinking about it. Also Shallow says every time I mention Shador to make sure I mention him. And he's in the first round as well. That's what he told me. To make sure. The follow up would be years from now when they're talking about what it was like to be coached by you, what would you hope they say? I don't care what they say. I I know <laughs> what they're gonna say, but uh you guys asked them that. I, I pretty much know. I know my kids like the back of my hand. I know my daughter she just came to meet me right after practice with a big smile and a hug. That meant that she needed some money for the trip. <laughs> <laughs> so we just went up there and made that exchange. We cut through the small talk and that was it. You know, she was going to get ready to party in a little bit. And I know she needed some money just by her presence. No, my kid. Brian, I'll yes, sir. the camera. Also a two-parter. But um, would it be safe to say that going into spring last year, you kind of knew that a lot of that roster was not going to be here. Oh, most definitely. You guys knew too, but it's funny that when I say it, it's a problem. Well, but, but <laughs> you know, why, why is that? When I say what everybody's thinking, why is it a problem? What's like I said some things about the offensive line last year, I wasn't derogatory to them. I just said, we go, I said everything that everybody was thinking watching the game. Why is it a problem? I'm just asking everybody. Why is it a problem when I say what you think? Probably a little oversensitized and worried about other I like that. So that's not my problem. No, your problem. Okay. Because you're but, coaching them and we're not. No, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. But you, you know, you got the power of the pen and now the the, the fingers and all that. And just, uh, that sounded really bad. But uh, <laughs> you have power. It sounded really bad. You have power. So my my lead into that is, I mean, you went into last spring kind of knowing yeah. this is not going to be our team. But this exactly. year, 
I would imagine, I mean, the group that's here, you feel much better about it. So I'm, I'm just curious, truly so. do you feel that you guys are going to be much further ahead than well, we you were last year? Had. Because you, we already had, I mean, this time last year, we darn near just met everybody. We pretty much, we had a gauge on everybody. We knew what they were capable of and what they weren't capable of. Um, this year, you're just trying to make sure the pieces fit. You know what you have. You know the depth that you have, and you know several other, several other pieces are going to be added um, as soon as the spring is over. You know that's going to happen this summer, and we already know. Some names you may not know, but we already do. So it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be phenomenal. Coach Kyle, you put there in the post. So Livingston, his experience with the Bengals, obviously Shermer, decades in the NFL. Keep going. How, keep how, going. How do you see that? Trend? No, 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 stop. How keep going. No, no. We got several other guys from the NFL. Keep going. How do you see all the NFL experience translate into this? this, this how can you tell somebody where to go if you haven't been there? It's hard for you guys to tell me how to get to your grill, you know, if you hadn't been there, but that's where you live. It's easy that, that way, right? And it, it's these kids today, man, they're not, it's not how we grew up. Our parents said, because I said so, and you took it. Uh, they, why? Why? Prove it to me, show me. Like, it's the show me type of young generation and, and prove it to me generation. Let me see your credentials type of generation. So when you compose a staff that pretty much embodies the NFL and where they're directed to, that is phenomenal. I think uh, eight, eight out of the 11 staffers either played or coached in the NFL. And that's phenomenal. Then you throw me in, that's nine. That's, that's tremendous to me. It really is. Coach, when we spoke in Utah, one of the last things we talked about was running the football and the importance True. and the emphasis that you were going to put on it this offseason. You yes. told us that running the football was 1A and stopping the run was 1B and you didn't know which order. How did you go about addressing that this offseason? Well, we, we, we were trying to address that. We were trying to address that alone for, for some time now. It's like, you, as a coach, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, you know what you got. You know, just like as a man, as a human being, as a woman and a man, you know your strengths and weaknesses and you know what you possess. You know you gotta overdress yourself if you're not handsome, right? <laughs> you gotta, you know, you gotta cause a diversion and you know, highlight yourself to other places. And that's what we did. Uh, but sooner or later they found the flaws, the tremendous flaws. But we feel as though we addressed a multitude of the needs. Uh, we could use a little more depth at the linebacker position. Uh, but shoot, the guys are, they're fighting their butts off right now. They're getting to the ball. They're doing what we need them to do. Um, but we know what we still have coming, and we know how the situation that we're going to address. So I'm pretty good, not just with the starters, but the depth, because that's a tremendous uh, asset that you need to, to play the, the amount of games that we plan on playing this year. It's not going to be just 12. As a quick follow-up, sorry, don't have the mic. Alton McCaskill, right? Kind of shut him down at the end of the year last year and hopes well, to get Alton him back healthy. I didn't shut him down. He no, I, I meant the yeah. decision was made to shut him yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, right? he, he Alton wasn't ready, man. So now, how does he look and how excited he are you for good. him? Shoot, he looks good. But you, you got to understand, I can look at his depth chart and say, yo, Dylan looks good too, right? <laughs> like uh, Savion looks good too. That young freshman, he's so tremendous as well. So and we may add to that room as well because you never know. See, the thing about Coaching these days, you got to think way down the street. You know, you don't just think here. So you just think, oh my God, these kids are wonderful that you have. But somebody's going to jump in the portal at the spring. They're going to do that. And you got to prepare for that stuff. So you, you prepare for that as well as uh, embrace what you have. It's a different game right now. Totally different game. Hey, Coach, uh, Pat Graham, Associate Press. Uh, as a father, as a coach, you hear back and fracture, and it's scary. Uh, yeah. How's she doing? How's he recovering? And Good. He's awesome. He, he really is. He's recovered uh, immensely. I think he's seven times better. Um, his back is. That's how many linemen we got, right? <laughs> <laughs> no linemen. It's a, what is it, seven or eight? Eight. eight. He's eight times better. <laughs> I'm serious. Than his back is <laughs> than he was last year. I mean, the way he's feeling. <laughs> he really is. So we're good. And then I guess this follow up on that it was with the you know he's you hear he's gonna, he's projected the high draft pick next year. What steps? Shadow, let's let's just get this straight. Let's get an elephant in the room. Shadow would have been a high draft pick this year. 
Okay, let's just start the foolishness and you get mad when I tell you I'm the only reason I know that because don't you think I know people in the NFL? I'm sorry. Um, I played for how many years? 14. Um, got a gold jacket at the crib, I think. I think I know some people. You know the Jerry Jones is that, you know, Arthur Blanks. Yeah, I know some people in the game. The Roger Goodell's, you know, I know some people. So when I speak, I'm not just throwing stuff out of my head. I'm throwing stuff based on knowledge. So let's just get that straight. If Shador would have gone in the draft this year, he probably would have been the second. Uh, he wouldn't have been the first quarterback off the board. I think he had the ability, but he probably would have been the second quarterback off the board. Let's just get that straight. I guess just I had that. to bet for a minute. I'm sorry. But no, that's fine. I, I had guess to get that out. What? 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 Is there maybe something that you want to see him elevate just a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to see him um, just take it to another level. It's not something that I can say. Eh, you got to do better than that. Because see. When I get on him, sometimes it's too premature because I go back and watch the film and I say, okay, I see, I see why you had to hold the ball right there. I see, well, we we blew a darn route. Uh, I think it was one of the one of the games at the end of the game. Uh, I think that's where he threw the pick. We had two guys running to each other. You guys didn't even know that, right? We had two guys running to each other on under routes. <laughs> that's why he had. To, see, you don't understand that stuff. That's why he had to hold the ball and he digressed a bit and just threw it up for Jesus. Yeah, no, I'm Steve Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Coach. Adam Mr. Tiger, 24-7. My man. Sports. Good to see you. How you doing, sir? Doing well, doing well. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Phil Lodeholt the other day. He mentioned that he spent some quality time with you before getting yeah. hired. During that process, what, what made him stand out to you? Shoot. His knowledge, his thought process, his, uh, the way, well, we met. We met at the crib, matter of fact. Texas. Just the way he came to the interview ready and prepared and what he could add to the room. He just had a commanding presence, not just about his size, but his relatability to the young men in today's game, as well as his ability um, to recruit. Because you got to look at all that, not just the coach, get recruit. And that's the things you really got to think about now. And he checked every darn box and then some. And now to see him at work, to see how they respond to him, to see how attentive he is and how detailed and how detail oriented he is. He's a shoot, he's a gem. Thank God we got him. Because he is undarn believable. And those guys work their butts off for him and he holds them accountable, truly. Plus, he was a dog, man. Like he was a dog. Like so. All you had to do was go in the film room and just turn the film on and say, uh, let me critique this tackle. He, he didn't even tell him it was him. Then you see what he does and all that, and then you say, oh, shoot, that was you? So he's been there and done that, and that, that gives him instant credibility in his room. But his commanding voice, and Gunner is doing a wonderful job, the system. He's been with me since Jackson, so that room is, is, is gonna be good. It's really gonna be good. Those kids are just nasty, man. They, they don't play, man. It was a fight today, good one too. I told him when the helmet's off, you gotta stop, you gotta stop. But it was a good one today. God, it was a good one. I don't advocate that, but when it happens, I'm, uh, I see you got that thing in you. You got that, that dog in him, man. And it was offense versus defense. It was, they went at it today, man. And I like that. I like that, I don't like him to fight. Not, not what it's ever, but I like that intensity. You know, in a day that we're not even padded. So, but Phil is unbelievable, man. Thank God we got him. Yeah, Coach. I love how you're raw, you're candid, you hold players accountable, but now after one season of coaching at this level, mm -hmm. what did you see about yourself that you would want to do it better, a game day coach specifically? Um, let's focus on this level first, because you said that like this was like Jesus was on the field you know, <laughs> playing. This level is this level. Um, this level has players that are a little better um, on the front lines than it was at Jackson, but the skill positions, I think, are equal quarterbacks a little different as well. They're phenomenal as well, but this level is is this level. I, I played at extreme level. Remember that? Oh yeah. You have a fourteen of them. So I understand this level. Um, for me, in game things that may happen, you, you can't prepare yourself for everything that you try to. Um, but some things that you want to change, just the thought process going into it. Um, but it's, it's, it's gonna be tremendous, much better communication. First of all, we have um, microphones in the, in the helmets now, so the, the direct, you know, 
We can talk right to the quarterback or right to the linebacker, get the calls in. That's going to be phenomenal. That's going to help tremendously. I wish it were several guys on each side of the ball, which would be tremendous. But uh, end game type of things. You can't be prepared for them, but you got to think through all of them. And I think we may have missed the boat on a couple of occasions. But overall, I think it was a good season when it comes to that. But I'm very harsh on myself, much more harsh than you guys are. But we're, we're, we're going to win. I know that. You know that. We're going to win. Hi, Coach. Taylor Stensky with Love Speed. So How you just doing, sweetheart? doing very well with you. She, she, she is awesome. We know each other. I came in there for autograph signing into a restaurant. She was the hostess of the hostess and did a wonderful job. So I remember her face. Yeah, sorry. Good to see you again. Amen. But I'm just curious, how important is it for you to know, like, the, pos the personalities and how your players operate to, like, but, like for the success of this team? On Tremendously. Individual? Yeah. Because you know what buttons to push. You know who's who, what's what. You know uh, fundamentally how these kids are and, and what gets them going. You, and you know that from their visits. And when you when they come, and uh, they present themselves, but when they get on the field, and, see, I go in the weight room and I sit there and work out myself, but I'm watching them. So I got on, I go on the field, I run, you know, get my laps in, but I'm watching them. I'm watching how they respond to adversity. I'm watching how they act when they're tired. I'm, I'm watching how they relate to their other players. I sit in meetings often, watch how they uh, relate to the coach, are they uh, attention. To, do they pay attention to detail? I'm always watching to find out different things about our kids. Because sometimes you, you, you get a kid here and he's, he's so much more than you thought he would be. And sometimes it's the opposite. But you got to know that. So you don't put him in situations where he's not going to succeed. You want to make sure we put him in situations where they, they're very successful on and off the field. Great question. Though. Jack Harlow with us. Jack Harlow. <laughs> Just with the incoming freshmen and the transfers that are here, just mm -hmm. have, have you seen those new guys kind of mesh with you know, the guys that are already here? Oh, uh, wonderful, especially during O line. I mean, they're everywhere together. Um, I think because uh, Rob uh, took uh, the safeties out yesterday, I think they put together last night and had a wonderful time. But the coaches have established relationships with, with all the team. That's the most important thing the coaches and the relationship with their groups. But these guys, I told you, it's, it's always tough for older people to get along, not, not kids and young adults. They, they get along quite easily, especially when they find a commonality. Like who works hard, they hang together. Who don't, they hang together. You know, who does their homework and their schoolwork, they hang together. Who don't, they hang together. Like, uh, it's easy for me to know who you are when I'm in the cafeteria because I eat, what am I trying to do every day with the kids? When I see what table they sit at. If you sit at the table with another kid that don't want to work at it, pretty much, I, that, you're telling me that's who you are. So uh, it's, it's easy to dissect that, but it's, it's very vital to find that out. A couple more, go ahead, Mark. Hey, Mark Kisla, Denver Gazette. When you gather this team now in the team meeting room, what do you see in that room now that you didn't in your Some adults? And, and as a result, I assume you see more talent. Yes. As a result, do you talk to them differently in terms of no. goals and expectations? I don't talk to them differently. No, the, the, the standard is the standard, regardless of who's out there. Um, these young men really understand the purpose, and they understand the goal. Like, uh, we had a message today. We, I don't know if um, Jerry's put it out yet, but we were talking about the difference, how we break down 100 players, and 10 of them, I believe, we said that um, they, they got it. They know they got it. They're willing to work. And I think it was, what, 25 of them there is that figured uh, they think they got it. They think they're on the right path, but eh, you don't know. And you got another 20 that's looking to get out, but they haven't got an opportunity. Like, I, I mapped out the collection of 100 young men in every room, not just our room, and where they are. But when I look out there now, I see guys hungry, eager, and have a commitment and willing to sacrifice whatever it is to get to the next level. And their goal is to get to the NFL. And my goal is to prayerfully get them there as well as the education. Uh, but these guys are different, man. They, <laughs> it's some different cats in there right now. It's some different coaches up there as well. It's, it's, it's a tremendous difference. Going back to what you asked me about coaching, that's another thing that I learned. Uh, 
you got to really take your time and truly be prayerful to, to understand who's in your room and who you bring in. Sometimes you think it clicks, but it just don't click. It just don't work. And that's not saying the guy's a bad guy, a uh, bad person, but it may not work for you. It may not work for me. And sometimes it did. That does not mean that it can't go somewhere and soar. Um, like the Nana Falcons, I, it, it worked for me athletically, but winning-wise, it didn't. So I, we went and, and we went to San Francisco, and it worked out tremendously, as well as Dallas. So some things that initially it may not, and that's what transpired um, a little bit with the staff and uh, some of the players. But I feel so darn good right now about the staff, about the team, about the city, about about everything that we're doing right now. We're going to practice three on Friday. I think we're going to pad up Friday because you I think two practices, then you would hit each other. I, I have, I, I know what's going to go down Friday. I really do. We may have to have the police out there Friday because <laughs> it's going down Friday. I promise you that. These guys are a little different. Did you expect too much of them last year? No, I didn't. I knew my team. I knew them. I, I knew what we had. I knew what we didn't have. I, I think truly we could have put them in better situations to be successful. Um, I think everybody, including the staff, would not built for the noise. What I mean by the noise, everybody's not built for the moment. Mm -hmm. You gotta understand that, like, and shoot, we took the moment to the greatest height. Like, it was like, shoot, and we plan on doing that again. But everybody's not built for that stage. That stage uh, comes with tremendous responsibility. And you gotta get young men that are used to that and committed to that and want it and uh, relish that opportunity to be on that stage. And they're ready to grab that microphone and hit that note. I mean, you gotta have those type of guys that I feel as though the goal is to get eight dogs on the side of the ball, seven or eight dogs that you know what you're gonna get on the Saturday. And uh, we, we got some guys that I'm, 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 I'm happy about. Let me address something else that I think I need to address. I don't know who did it. I don't know if they're in here. If they are, you can just raise your hand like we, we did when we were in nursery. <coughs> in here. Um, there's an article that came out that said, I don't go on visits. He's not here, sir. OK. M my approach is totally different than many coaches' approach. Um, uh, sometimes I look, I'm a businessman as well, so I try to save our university money every darn chance. I get so for me to go to let's just say I'm going to Florida and I'm visiting uh, whatever school IMG you don't think those coaches gonna be a little upset if I don't come by the school down the street you, think, you don't think it's gonna be pandemonium if, if, <laughs> if or, uh, I'm gonna get naysayed if I don't go another 45 minutes then if I go to that one then I go uh, why well, I didn't come to that school. Now the coach is mad, so he's not going to let the kid come because he's mad because I chose that, go to that school over that school. See, other coaches, they could do that, but I can't. I can't. And I've really pretty much done a personal survey. I really, truly, in all my heart, believe that parents don't want me at their house. They want to come see my house. They want to see how I live. Now, I get that. They want to see what I got going on, what God has done in my life. I know when I was in college, I did not want Bobby Bowden in my house because I knew at the 7 o'clock it was going to be rats and roaches on parade doing their thing. <laughs> so that, that was just straight up, honestly. I did it. So uh, that never transpired. That never happened for me. And we target um, mostly guys that's in the portal. When do you make visits to portal guys' homes? Anybody do that? Do they do that? I, I don't know. Anybody? Have you guys heard of that? I don't. I think when a guy is in his 20s and he has one or two more shots, he don't give a darn about the picture. He don't give a darn about the parade that you want to take him on. He wants to know, okay, how are you going to use me? How can you help me get to the league? And what am I going to get paid? That's it. That's the world we live in now. I, don't, I have never heard one guy say, I chose this college because this coach came by my crib. Have you? It's different now. The parents, I love them. And I want to show them Boulder. I want them to see this and how beautiful it is and why I'm so eager and how much I love this 
city, in this, this state, in this team. I want them to see that because guess what? That's where the kid is coming. Kid coming here. Oh, and there's this showcase for me. This is blowing money. It's blowing a bag. Don't make sense. And I can't do the things other coaches can do. You know what? I'm Coach Brad. And I didn't stutter when I said it. <laughs> we got Shador and Jordan. Are you good? Shador, let me see. Shador, bring Shador in. Shador. That was a great ending. It was a great landing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it off my chest. You landed it. Uh, Jordan's here, Coach. There Jordan, come on. Where's he at? Big fella. Mr. Sapp just takes me good morning. I mean, good afternoon. That's what he said. Come here. Good. Were you out there fighting today? Nah. <laughs> you heard what he said. I ain't fight today. We I fight every play, though. I didn't see you driving somebody down the field 15 yards trying to push him and then overly aggressive. Well, that did I, I did see that? that? Yeah, that I did do. That was me. I take credit for that one. Do you understand that difference, what he just said? Y'all didn't catch that. I just did that so y'all understand the difference. This man is different. Appreciate you. Love you, boy. Yes, sir. Love you. Thank 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 you.